wanted to explore, you know, how people get extraordinary results. Not average, but extraordinary. What's an approach that we can take for that? And for us, it was about focus. But we tried to come at it from a new angle. Um, how do you identify the one thing, right? You know, what's the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else is easier or unnecessary? What's the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary? You're looking for the biggest lever in your life to achieve your goals. And we wanted to help people identify that and then implement that thing. The first lie was this idea that everything matters equally. Mm. And I actually don't think people argue that or express it, but it's act that way. And it's because our to-do lists are too full. Our calendars are kind of overflowing. Um, I've had moments in my life where I was literally mapping out my days in 15 minute increments. And there are a lot of people who feel that way. We have a lot of opportunity to do stuff and we have a lot of obligation. And I kind of compare the way we operate to like being a character in a B-horror movie that runs up the stairs instead of out the front door. And so the antidote to that was essentially, you know, we want you to launch your days by identifying the things that you could do and then identify the handful that you really should do and then prioritize them from one to whatever. Multitasking is a lie. The big crux there is that in reality, when we think we're multitasking, Researchers call it switch tasking because what actually happens is we're doing our work and then we decide to switch and that's instantaneous. It's like squirrel, boom, we're off to the next thing. The thing that they realized challenged us is when you switch tasks, your brain has to reorient to the new rules of the game and there's a lag. If you've ever been like writing a really complex email and maybe your spouse walks in and starts talking to you, you know they're talking to you. You can hear words in the air, but you actually don't comprehend them. And you say, oh, I'm sorry, what were you saying? That's that lag time. And researchers believe about a quarter of our day, 28% is lost to this, and we're not even aware of it. It's a huge loss. I mean, as an employer, I look, wow, I have five employees, but I might need four if they were all just being efficient with their time. There's a guy in the, the College of uh, New London, and he did uh, research into IQ tests, and he compared the results of people who were focusing. He compared the results of people who were having to multitask. They had to juggle emails and phone calls while they took an IQ test. And very hilariously, he compared them to people who were stoned. You know, nobody was surprised that on average, the people who were focused scored 11 points higher than the other two groups. They were shocked that the people who were stoned on average scored six IQ points higher than the people who were multitasking. It costs you time, it makes you dumb, and you're just less effective. So we really tried to get people, if not stop multitasking all the time, when you're doing your main thing, your one thing, at least stop multitasking then. If I was actually more focused when I was at work, could I have more time with my family? I think there's a real human cost that I think about, and it, it makes me a little bit sad. You know, the economic cost is one thing, but what's the cost to my family if I'm working late every day just because I'm not being as effective as I could be? Discipline, one of the meanings for it, is training yourself to do something until it's habitual. Being disciplined all the time, which we go into in willpower, there is some science about how you, there is an ebb and flow to your, what we often call this one, and now I'm going to call it willpower. But this other definition is, if you know what your one thing is, the very next thing you would want to do is make a habit. Because if that became habitual, you work to build the habit, and then the habit would work for you. And when we look at the research, like how long does it actually take to form a habit? On average, around 66 days. The scientists, right, the guys in the lab coats were calling it willpower. And they defined that as the power to say yes to what you need to do. If I'm on a diet, that means, you know, carrot sticks and, and hummus, and no to everything else. So no nachos for me. And both of those, they measure it, literally take energy out of your system. Your brain is one fiftieth of your body mass, and it takes up one fifth of all of the energy you consume. Literally, if you make a decision, you know, I am wearing black shoes today and a black tie, that little tiny decision, they can measure that glucose in your bloodstream will drop. But there's things that require a lot more power. Like, I'm going to focus on this task. I'm not going to go play on Twitter. Saying no to those temptations and saying yes actually uses a lot of energy. You tend to have the most in the morning. 
and you can replenish it by eating properly. So we tell you, give willpower the time of day and feed it. If you enjoy this podcast, please make sure to subscribe. And to stay updated on everything that the Action Catalyst is up to, make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Action Catalyst Podcast and on Twitter at Catalyst underscore Action. And thanks for listening.